Hi there. My name's Matt, and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. This is episode 4 of my tutorial Let's Play. In the last episode, we uh, dealt with the layout of the fort, and uh, creating an efficient fortress design, separating it out into various layers for various functions, and uh, assigning our dwarves some labours and their own sleeping areas. And today we'll be looking at setting up the industries which will allow that fortress to thrive. And the first of those will be the agriculture industry. So we'll be looking at um, using the animals which we brought with us and also um, getting some food preparation and some brewing into place. Because previously, having brought so much alcohol and um, one thing after another, I'd only really set up very basic farming and just given the dwarfs a watering hole just in case. But uh, as you can see by pressing the Z button in the stockpiles here, I now have no drink remaining. So that could be quite a, uh, quite a serious eventuality in a dwarf fortress. If the dwarfs don't drink, they will go mad. Luckily I've uh, got a uh, special area prepared for a kitchen, brewery, a fishery and uh, possibly something else as well later. So we'll just build those now. So it's uh, B to build and then W for workshops and then first of all a kitchen which for some reason is Z. And I'll just pop that there and we'll make that from Gabro. And uh, next of all is a brewer's workshop, uh, or a still, as known as here, so that would be uh, L, letter L. And I'll just pop that in the other corner. And uh, then we'll need a fishery to process any fish which may be brought back by our fisherman, our fisher dwarf. And we'll put that in that corner there. And finally, well we've already got a farmer's workshop so we don't need any more of those. I'll leave the space for um, if we need to make a mill or a quern or something along those lines a bit later on. And now if we just unpause the game, hopefully our dwarf should build those quite quickly. Okay, there we go, so those have now been completed, and if you go into them using the Q menu, you're able to add tasks, and uh, for the still, we'll be adding the task to brew a drink from a plant. That'll be from the plant matter we've collected all across the um, the map, the, uh, the parts we selected earlier, or possibly from the plump helmets and such and such which we brought uh, with us, or have grown since we've been here. And now if we go to the uh, next one, Long Kitchen, we'll add a new task and we'll ask them to prepare an easy meal. And we'll just do 10 of those. Now, when you cook a plant, the seeds are destroyed and we don't want that to happen. So we'll go into Z again, the Z menu, and uh, we'll need to go to Kitchen. And you can see here all of the... Um, items which we've got available at the moment and whether you can cook them and or brew them. So let's see, barley we can cook and brew, oh no sorry, bloated tubers we can cook or brew. Well uh, let's remove cook from that, the dwarves will still eat them raw if necessary uh, but eating them raw preserves the, uh, preserves the seeds as does brewing. Uh, let's see, cave wheat we can only brew, celery we can only cook. Is it parsnip? There we go. Parsnips we will only brew. Potatoes, radishes, well, there's quite a few like that. I was really looking for um, for plump helmets, in fact. Where are we? There we go, plump helmets. That's the important one. The rest of these don't think they'll grow indoors. We'll have to set up an outdoor farming plot for those, which I don't really like to do. It's not very dwarven. So uh, we'll just leave them to it. And the farmer, sorry, the other uh, brewer and the cook should be along any second to start making those um, items. And here we are. 
house and merchants have arrived and need a trade depot in order to unload their goods. I generally don't build one until they arrive because you are able to put up a trade depot quite quickly and uh, and it, there's really not too much point building one until they arrive. The other uh, traders will come to it if they're still on the map once it's built. Now, to build a um, to build a trade depot, it's B and then capital D. And you can see it's quite large. It takes three resources. We'll pop that down just here near the entrance, but not too close. And we'll use three pecan woods to create that and our dwarf should be along any second if we unpause the game to create that okay so uh, along with the caravan came a trade liaison from the mountain homes and he's now going to ask us um, what we need from the mountain homes in the form of trade He's going to give us some news first. Uh, someone was kidnapped, someone was kidnapped, someone was kidnapped. So there is a kidnapper in the area, certainly. That'll be uh, goblins, probably. And someone became the mayor of somewhere. That's all good to know. And here's the important part. So these are any particular goods which they might be, um, which they might have available to sell. And you're able to set your priority, um, your desire for the items, using the arrow keys. So let's see, um, well, or oh, actually the plus and minus for the far left hand column and then the arrow keys for the other. So we'll go to cloth first of all. I will order some cloth simply because we might not get the industry running in time. Not giant cave silk though. Uh, giant cave spider silk cloth is significantly more, more uh, more expensive than cave spider silk cloth, so we'll just order the lower one. I don't anticipate money being a problem, however. Uh, we don't want to order crafts from them. We'll be selling our crafts to them. Wood, we have plenty of. Metal, now. It's possible we might not be able to get iron or steel in this particular location. So I'll just... Uh, prioritize some iron bars, some pig iron bars and some steel so we are able to make our own steel if necessary. Uh, gems we won't order, again we'll be selling our gems to them or encrusting our gems on to our finished goods to multiply their value. Uh, seeds now, I can never have enough seeds. If you increase the priority too high all the way they will increase their prices anvils. It could help us to have a couple of spare anvils which we don't have to create ourselves especially if we don't have iron this might be the only way to get hold of them and in actual fact if you don't have iron you can buy any spare anvils which come your way, any spare iron items and then simply melt them down to create your own. Weapons and training weapons we'll be making our own if necessary. Now ammo, bolts, we might not be able to get um, a decent supply of um, high density metal bolts very quickly so I will order some of those um, and drinks there we are and why not some food as well so some cheeses, some yak cheese, some sheep cheese, water buffalo cheese and some meats as well. Just some random meats. Oops. That was the wrong key there. Now. I don't think there's much point ordering anything else. We um, already have a good supply of most things which we need and we'll be able to get a supply of anything else very shortly. So I think that's all we'll order for the moment and um, we'll just leave the conversation there. He just asks us to uh, just finalise and just double check. He asks a couple of times 
can be a bit annoying. There we go. So next year they should have items which we need and uh, rather than just any old uh, junk which uh, they might have randomly put together. Now, unfortunately they haven't built the trade depot yet. Normally they build a trade depot fairly rapidly. Let's see. So uh, it was just to go over that again, it was the U button to uh, view any units on the map and then we use the arrow keys to go across to others and then you can see all the wild animals which are probably actually in the cave level, these troglodytes um, the uh, merchant there and a mace dwarf he's brought with him to, uh, to look after him and also some wild animals here which seem to be on the top, sort of the, uh, the, top of the map some storks and a wild boar and you can zoom in on any of those using the Z key so let's zoom in on the merchant and just see where he is. Hmm. He's right at the bottom of the screen. Which way is he going? Doesn't seem to be. He's not travelling at all. In actual fact, I think they'll wait at the bottom of the screen until we have a, uh, a trade depot set up. And if we don't get it done in time, they'll just leave. So uh, they should be fine there for the moment. And fingers crossed the trade depot will, uh, will materialise before then. And we can possibly speed that along by giving other people uh, jobs to help. So let's just see exactly what's going on here. Waiting for architecture. Now who's got architecture? We'll have a look at uh, Dwarf Therapist and architecture is one of these here, so actually no one has been allocated architecture hmm. let's see, the weaving fisher dwarf the lie maker actually this lie maker doesn't seem to do anything else other than process plants, haul and, uh, and lime, which we actually don't use, so I think we'll call the lime maker our new architect. There we go. And I'll just clear out some of his hauling tasks as well. I like to leave some of them there. Burial, for example, and um, refuse collection, just to keep the fort tidy. So uh, they'll always bury a dwarf or clear up any rubbish that they come across. And let's just commit those changes there and go back to the game. And now if we hit U, we should see, hopefully, there you see, uh, construct building. The lie maker is, uh, is now an architect and he's helping to construct that building. So if there's ever um, a workshop or a building which, uh, which is taking a long time to be constructed, you can always hover over it using the Q menu, um, for example this wood furnace here, um, and it will show you in the top right hand corner exactly why it's not being completed. So for this one it says here, needs masonry. Um, and just a moment ago, using Dwarf Therapist, I actually allocated another dwarf the masonry, masonry task and uh, committed the change. So I'm hoping any second now that furnace may actually take shape. Oh look at that, there's someone there. Someone wandered over to it. And there we have it, a working wood furnace. So I'll be adding a new task and asking it to create charcoal which is going to come in extremely handy for us to get our um, forging industry working, our metalwork industry working before we have access to the magma forges when we dig down a little bit later on. So there we go, I'll just make 10 for the moment and uh, I already have at least one dwarf allocated to wood burning, there we go. So he should take care of that now. And uh, let's have a quick look at what's going on with the, uh, with the kitchen and the still. There we go, so he's uh, he's finished off the uh, the easy meals and he's now brewing some drinks. 
and so if we go into the Z menu we'll be able to see uh, there are now 30 drinks available so I'm sure our dwarves will be very happy with that and we can now see that the trade depot also is up and running so are we just going to that with the Q menu and let's see if we press the R button that indicates that the trader is required at the depot um, B controls an option which either allows just the broker to trade at the depot um, and uh, or alternately allows anyone to trade there so that's if the broker uh, for example is asleep and won't move uh, or if um, he has a nasty accident on the way um, possibly gets eaten by a troll that kind of thing so I will leave that one only the broker may trade for the moment you can see those options there in the top right um, and uh, we'll press G to move some goods to the depot well, in actual fact very quickly what we want to do is allocate a noble using the N button and we will allocate a broker and that will have to be our expedition leader because we gave him the appraiser skill earlier on and it's actually quite a difficult skill to find you can see only one other guy has any relevant um, skills there so we'll call our expedition leader our appraiser and now when we go into the uh, the queue menu for this building we'll be able to see what things are worth when we're moving them to and from the uh, the trade depot and also when we're trading with the traders so once again let's press G and now we're able to move some goods over now I'll press D to sort them by uh, value first of all you can see the most valuable thing we have at the moment uh, is uh, some food some prepared food so that'll be one of the easy meals we prepared earlier so I'll press uh, enter just to pen, uh, put that as pending to be moved to the trade depot uh, the next one is a gem bin but I want to keep hold of that some seeds some plants an iron anvil I'm almost positive I made some crafts I made some um, stone crafts earlier maybe I did but they're just not worth very much apparently I didn't so I'll be using um, a couple of the items which I've created as trade so let's see hmm, those beds are quite good quality um, unfortunately I'd like to keep hold of them uh, let's try and create something very quickly they're at least going to bring over that food barrel that'll be worth something and I'll be able to trade some very basic things possibly seeds or something like that just so I get an idea of how it works if you look in the top right hand corner again you can see the broker's current task so if he's not turning up you can see whether he's asleep or uh, eating or just why he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing right there but uh, as you can see in blue trade at depot is his most uh, it is his active task and there in the bottom you can see the traders moving towards the freshly constructed depot and there we go they've unloaded their goods I think we will try to create something very quickly to create some crafts um, which might be uh, hopefully worth a bit more than the food and the tables we currently have so let's go down to our crafting level there we go and to our crafts dwarfs workshop and there we go I thought so he's currently making rock crafts let's have a look what our jeweler is doing our jeweler is currently cutting some jewels and I uh, will just press C to cancel that task and now we'll add a new task to encrust the gems he's previously cut on the finished goods the um, the um, stone crafts which the mason is now working on and uh, there you can see in the uh, in the top right hand corner you can use the plus and minus keys to scroll down the various already cut gems and we'll select one and press E to encrust 
and then G to encrust unfinished goods. And we'll do that. Uh, we'll press R to repeat that task. And I think we'll do another one. So add new task. We'll do that with um, red spinels as well. So E to encrust, G for finished goods, and then R to repeat the task. And in fact, let's encrust some furniture as well. Let's encrust Pinfire Opal onto some furniture. So that's F for furniture. And uh, we'll repeat that task as well. So um, that way, when we're beautifying our fort, when we're beautifying our um, dwarves sleeping areas, um, encrusted gems, especially if they're preferred by the dwarves, will, uh, will increase their happy thoughts exponentially and uh, make them pretty much imper impervious to depression if you do it correctly. There we go, so let's just leave them to get on with that. I'll unpause the game and pop back to the trade caravan. So we'll go into that with the Q menu and you can see because the broker is there and because the traders have unloaded their goods there is an option to trade with T. Let's have a look. The prepared food barrel was worth 638 dwarf bucks. That's really good. So we'll mark that for trade. And you can see in the bottom of the screen here, trader profit from that would be the whole 638 dwarf bucks because we haven't selected anything we want from them right now. So let's go over to their column. They've brought some bars, silver and gold, some jewels, but we don't need those, or the blocks, raw glass, well we can make our own, we have sand so we don't need that, mm, some cages they've brought, oh let's see, they brought a llama with them, they brought a female llama, oh it's worth too much, we can't, oh no that was 220, yes we can afford that, I think we'll take the llama, sold, um, they've also included some armor, which we don't really need, we'll make our own. Some weapons, what else? Now this is interesting, cloth. Sometimes it's hard to get hold of cloth um, as quickly as you might like. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just take some of the cloth from this particular barrel. And actually the same with the leather as well. Mm, that leather's worth quite a lot. We'll take eagle leather, just a couple of pieces, just in case we need some before we're able to provide our own. Um, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, the bagged goods. Bagged goods all um, all occur together, and this is where you'll find the seeds, if there are any. So, plaster, sand, wheat flour, just the bags and that seems to be it they don't seem to have brought any seeds with them oh, let's have a look another anvil might be handy we'll take that other anvil let's see now the value we've added is about 400 so their profit would be 240 so they'd be very happy with that trade sometimes it can be a bit of a backwards and forwards when you're bartering with them and uh, it, it can, they can get annoyed and sometimes they can just leave they can just stop trading with you um, once the goods are highlighted, both sides are highlighted, um, it's very important not to press O to offer. Um, because if you offer some goods to the traders, it's like you're just giving it to them uh, to make them happy. So it does increase their mood, but it's if you're not aware of what you're doing, it's very easy to just give everything which you've uh, marked for trade to the traders. So we have goods from both sides marked, so actually offer marked is uh, is no longer highlighted what we'll do instead is uh, press T as you can see down here um, to uh, to trade those goods and we'll see if they if they like that trade they certainly should hmm, ask are you sure I don't believe he used to ask if you were sure yes I'm sure wonderful thank you for your business there we go, so we have successfully traded with the traders. We've got a very valuable anvil, 
got a couple of items which we might not have been able to get very quickly otherwise. Uh, unfortunately we didn't get any seeds but we have ordered some of those for next year and we've probably still got plenty of our own. We can check using the Z menu there. Let's see, seeds, we still got 20 at least so that's absolutely fine. thing we'll want to look at is establishing our agriculture industry. At the moment we've, uh, we've got a few animals wandering around wild and uh, we've got a couple of kitchens which are basically just using plants to process, um, to, to make the, uh, the easy meals for the dwarves and we want to bring that all together somehow to, um, to make sure the dwarves are slaughtering animals, are using eggs, um, they'll get leather and bone as side products then. Um, in actual fact they'll be able to make soap I believe from the residue as well which I'll look into. I've never been able to manage that myself but uh, I'm sure that will be fine. Um, oh you can see a message on the bottom there, the, uh, the merchants will be leaving soon. That's kind of a last minute warning which you get. Let's see if we've got any gem encrusted uh, finished goods. So. Um, G to move goods and then D to sort by value and at the top there, oh finished goods bin, there we go so we'll mark that to be dragged over because I made bins earlier the goods are contained within bins uh, rather than just being listed separately but you will be able to trade them separately if necessary there we go that one bin should be fine and back to agriculture so the uh, the first thing we want to do is make use of the turkeys and the hens which we brought with us because they're an excellent source of food they just provide eggs round the clock um, and if you uh, if you actually leave the eggs to develop then uh, you get the new generations more meat um, and leather as well for the uh, for the turkeys the first thing necessary for that however is nest boxes for the uh, for the birds to nest in so we'll be going down to the uh, crafting area and the queue menu on the craft dwarfs craft dwarfs workshop and we'll add a task and let's see it should be rock and then nest box there we go and we'll make eight of those uh, we'll make a, a full ten in fact of those and let's see what else is going on very quickly well right, let's make some more barrels and a couple of buckets possibly there we are and let's have our mason working on some doors and some tables and we've got two haven't we so let's have some chairs and uh, some more coffins I think why not and that should keep them busy for the moment Oh, and the merchants have already left. Unfortunately, we weren't able to um, to get the finished goods there in time. Let's see if we need to move them back. No, we don't. All of those goods will be hauled back automatically to our own stockpiles. And some more migrants have arrived. So uh, we'll just unpause the game and see how many we get. a few this time around. I think we'll need to designate some more sleeping areas very shortly. They brought quite a lot of pets and livestock with them as well by the looks of it. In fact this is quite a large migration wave. It's a huge migration wave. all of them. Let's press U to have a look at our units. Um, yeah, so that was 12 dwarfs. We've got all in one go, so that was, that's almost doubled our, our population. And I think we'd better take that into account straight away. So we'll go to the um, kitchen and the brewery, which we just built. I think drinks are more necessary at the moment than food. We've got plenty of food. They can eat raw food, so we'll do B, W and L 
for a still and double down on the number of stills which we have and uh, let's just make sure we have enough brewers to man them so let's go to dwarf fortress dwarf therapist rather and we'll click to read the dwarves and uh, again we'll filter them by their migration wave just so we can see the uh, last 12 which have come in and let's see where's cooking and brewing here they are so unfortunately we don't have any new cooks or brewers in this batch well, let's see who we have who's quite close to that or who possibly doesn't have much else going on in their lives this lady here seems to be a fish dissector and nothing more so we'll promote her and uh, she's now a brewer and we'll just take away a few of her um, hauling tasks we'll leave food hauling refuse hauling and burial um, simply just to keep the place clean I like to leave those active on all of my doors in fact um, food hauling if you don't have that, act um, that active on all of your dwarves it's possible that food which uh, is ready to be harvested or hauled somewhere else might go rotten while it's waiting to do so um, and cause miasma to stink up the place and we'll commit that excellent so now at least we'll know that our dwarves um, we'll be able to get drunk uh, and you can see in the meantime a weaver has been taken by a fey mood so that's a strange mood he's getting ready to create some kind of artifact I'm not sure what that might be it could be a epic silver warhammer with uh, spikes of bronze possibly depending on what we've got or it could just be a sock with an interesting pattern on it and you never know until it arrives. Let's have a look at our new still. There we go. And uh, we'll also prepare some meals. Let's prepare some fine meals for our dwarves. The difference between easy, fine and lavish is the amount of ingredients which they use to prepare the meal. Um, I think it's two, three and four. Um, I think by now the nest boxes should be complete so we'll try and build those as you can see the area we'll be building the nest boxes in is now good and covered in moss and what have you let's hover over that let's, uh, let's use the K button and see exactly what that is so that's cave wheat which grows wild cave moss, quarry bushes they also grow wild a tower cap That'll actually turn into a tree. We'll be able to harvest that as a wood if we let it continue to its full size. So let's build some next nest boxes for our poultry. So that's B and then capital N. And I'll place these with a bit of space in between them. Well, in actual fact, there aren't many that have been built yet, but two will be sufficient. There we go. And we'll now want to designate a pasture for our animals and we do that using a zone. So we'll press the I button and we'll ded dedicate that whole area as a pasture using the N button. And now capital N will allow you to add creatures to that uh, particular place and we'll add the uh, all of the tea, uh, the poultry. So that's the turkey gobbler and all three hens not the dogs not the cats not the sow or the boar or the goats and here we are three hens and a rooster there we go do we have any other we do have a chick that must have been brought with the uh, the immigrants because uh, birds don't reproduce outside of nest boxes a drake oh he's got a name though so he'll be someone's pet um, and there are no more birds so excellent there we go they should now be pastured there by the dwarves and as soon as the nest boxes are built the birds should start occupying them of the nest boxes here 
eventually will fill this whole area with nest boxes, but that's not really necessary for the moment. That should be plenty for now. I think that's uh, that's seven, and we've only got six laying uh, animals, so that should be fine. And to make sure the dwarves don't gather the eggs, you need to uh, go into the stockpile settings, and that's the Q button. And then we'll uh, press S to go into the settings. And food, and there we go, eggs. Now um, we will block all eggs except for hen eggs. Finding them can be a bit of a challenge because Dwarf Fortress is so extensive. All of these creatures exist. There we go, hen egg. So we will add hen egg. Those are the only eggs which will be collected and added to this particular stockpile. And we'll do the same thing to the other two food stockpiles which we created the other day. So that's settings, food, eggs, block all, except hen egg. to see if we scroll along um, hmm. oh it's tab you tab across to meat fish or other and you're able to select hen egg or turkey egg now uh, hen egg we will leave as cookable because we do want them to eat the hen eggs however turkeys will be uh, will be raising a batch of turkeys so we will not allow them to cook the turkey eggs. So turkey eggs will now neither be gathered nor cooked. And they should then stay in the nest box until they're hatched. And you can actually see if a nest box has any eggs in there by pressing T, the T key to check what's inside a building. You can actually see that over the trade depot. You can see first of all what it's made from. The B indicates that it's made, uh, built from those items. And then you can see there's some cloth and some leather, which we actually bought from the traders earlier, but we don't yet have cloth or leather stockpiles. So they're just kind of sitting there waiting for that. And uh, now if we hover over the, um, the first couple of next box nest boxes we built. Well, there are no eggs in there at the moment, but that's fine. We did only build them very, very um, recently. I think what we'll also do is use the T-Bone just to check the, um, the wagon. Yeah, as you can see, it's just the, the willow that it's made from and some pigtail thread which is left in that particular location. So uh, let's actually deconstruct that. Let's use X to deconstruct that building. There we go. I think I'll add a cloth stockpile, a thread stockpile. So it's P for stockpiles and X to remove a previous designation because this doesn't seem to be getting much use. And we'll remove the bottom three um, levels of that. And in actual fact, I'll want a leather stockpile there as well at some point. So we'll remove a couple more. It's L for leather and then cloth is H. There we go and now our dwarves should start to move over those particular items. There we go, they've already taken something from the trade depot. Now going back to our theme of agriculture, the nest boxes are in place and hopefully we'll, um, we'll provide us with some new life shortly which we'll then be able to slaughter. Um, to do so, we will need a slaughterhouse. I've already kind of prepared a little area down here 
next to the food preparation area which we can use as a slaughterhouse. Um, okay, and it is quite close to the um, to the pasture as well, so it'll be less uh, less walking for the dwarves who are doing that particular job. So as you can see here, we've got the uh, the pasture, and um, do you know I think we'll need another one. We'll need another pasture for any um, ruminants which we might have, any grazing animals. So let's create another one just next to that one and again we'll have a diagonal entrance to that to prevent miasma. Just make sure, yeah, there we go. So that'll be another pasture for any goats or um, donkeys or what have you which we might want to keep, at least temporarily. They, uh, they graze quite heavily so it's best to, uh, to slaughter those larger animals. Is terrible. Thank you very much for that, Windows. Now, so we'll create a new workshop using B for build, W for workshop, and uh, we'll need first of all a butcher's, which I actually can't see there. There we are. That's you for a butcher. And we'll put that just inside the entrance there. And because a leather item will be created automatically, um, it's best to have a leather worker quite close to that. So that's a tanner, that's N. And we'll pop that just there. So uh, now if we do need to slaughter an animal, an animal will be taken from the pasture down to the butcher, slaughtered, um, any food will be taken pretty directly to the food stockpile which is quite close and uh, any leather will be dealt with on the spot. As well as nest boxes, Crafts, Crafts Dwarfs workshops will also provide uh, beehives which will allow you to collect honey and uh, also will uh, allow you to uh, collect wax for wax works and uh, in actual fact I, I believe you can make mead from honey as well, I think you can brew mead from honey. So uh, honey is very useful to have. I'm sure I saw that someone was stung by a honeybee earlier. So let's see if we can create a couple of beehives and uh, start off our own honey industry. So let's add a task to a Crafts Dwarfs workshop and uh, we'll make it out of rock. And you can see their hive and uh, we'll just get four for the moment. And I think I'll make him create a few more nest boxes as well, just because. Okay, so I thought for a moment that the uh, landscape might have been on fire, or possibly it was raining elf blood, because that does happen. Uh, but apparently it's autumn and all of the leaves are turning red, falling off the trees. You can see all of this red stuff here. It's, uh, it's leaves, chestnut leaves, pecan leaves, birch leaves. That wasn't in the last version of Dwarf Fortress I played. It's very pretty. So apparently we've got another thief, another kobold thief. Um, let's zoom in on him. So it's A for announcements and then Z. And oh, there he is. He's a kobold thief. So uh, we've already got a squad in place, so we'll press S for squad, A to select that squad, uh, oh, and T to make them active, and then uh, K for kill, L to select from a list, and it's uh, apparently E. I could also kill the outpost liaison, apparently. I won't, probably won't be clever. Um, we'll just kill the thief. So there we go, we'll give that order, and press space to resume the game when he's running away there. He's probably... Oh no, there we go, something's happening. Yes. We killed the kobold. As you can see, there is his kobold corpse. He's left a large copper dagger. And some clothes. Not that I'll loot them, um, but that's apparently what he was carrying. Now you can check combat text in Dwarf Fortress by pressing R. Now you can see um, 
militia commander is fighting. The, the kobold is fighting, so we can see exactly what's happened to that kobold. So it looks like our militia commander, our uh, Marksdorf, is trying to punch the guy. That's um, that's because I haven't made a bow for him. I forgot to pack one when we came, uh, and I haven't made one yet. So that's on me. That's why he's uh, he's a Marksdorf. His fists. And unfortunately, the axe dwarf didn't seem to make it over there. Yeah, so the cobalt just was strangled in the end. A fitting end. I think we'd better do something about that. So let's go down to our crafting area and we'll need to create a bowyers. So that's B, W, and is that is that H? No. That's my eyesight. Let's scroll down to it. There we are. Possibly it's B. It's B. Should have known. And we'll put that next to the woodstock pile there. And we'll need to make sure one of our dwarves has the labour enabled. So, Boria is along this column here. And we do have a dwarf with that enabled. And I'll actually disable couple more of his skills just to make sure he gets over there straight away but I will leave the hauling tasks enabled on this guy um, because Boya really is a bit of a niche industry we're not going to use him too much he'll mainly be a hauler so we'll just commit those changes and he should build that anyway So it's B to build, and a uh, hive, I believe, is uh, oh, it's Alt, Alt and H. And I do have at least one, so uh, let's place that. We'll put that, we'll put it away from the entrance to our fort slightly, simply because bees sting. Let's put it up a bit, kind of here. Seems we've got all of them built. There we go, we'll place those there. And again, we'll need to make sure that a dwarf has that labour. So we're going to dwarf therapist. Beekeeping, where is beekeeping? Here we go, beekeeping and wax working. We'll have one dwarf to do both. Who doesn't do much else? This guy seems to be just a potash maker, so we'll call him a beekeeper as well. And um, I don't think there's much that needs to be done beekeeping wise, so again we'll leave his um, hauling tasks enabled. There we go, and he should build those quite soon. animal we brought with us which I'd like to talk about is the dog and uh, you've already seen a hunting dog be allocated to a hunter um, we'll be doing the same with uh, with other animals but we'll be training up war animals so we'll designate a downward staircase using D and J and I think I'll just pop that just here kind of off to the corner of the main staircase uh, but not inter intersecting with anything else staircase just to match up to that down below and then I'm going to designate out um, let's see designate out quite a large area um, for a kennel ah that's a shame that's a great shame the dwarf went into a strange mood and I forgot about it and he's gone berserk mm. so we'll press Z, uh, A to, to uh, have a look at the announcements and then Z to zoom in and there he is let's have a quick look at him can we uh, press enter 
doesn't say why he's mad. Well, it's obviously because I didn't have the right workshop uh, built. He was probably waiting for like a cloth workshop, a clothing workshop, or a leather workers or something like that to be built, so he could start his project. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have those built yet, and he's gone mad. That's entirely on me. I think that he's gone berserk means that he's actually going to start fighting. He's going to start fighting people. Let's have a quick look at the R menu. And yes, he's fighting. He's fighting a dog. Well. As he is completely insane, we'll want to deal with that. And we'll deal with that in the same way as we dealt with the kobold, which is with our military squad. We'll just... Uh, Press S for the squad, A to select the uh, the only one we have. If we had several squads, there would be a list, A, B, C, D, etc. Um, we will then K, L, and then he's at the first one, A. And enter to give that command. That's a shame, we're going to have to kill our dwarf. Well, it's possible, it's possible he's already been killed, someone just ran away. We'll have a look at the combat text in a minute. Yep, there we go, he's bled to death. Okay, we'll have a look at the combat text in just a moment. Uh, what I did want to do, which I didn't do earlier, is uh, build some coffins. Which, <laughs> luckily, I've already made the crypt. I've got the coffins prepared, so I just need to drag them into place and then set them for use. Now I cannot see coffin there. A burial receptacle in for November for a burial receptacle. And there we have the remains of our berserk dwarf with uh, everything he had on him. His mittens, his cap, uh, not a lot else some blood, some vomit, um, and uh, some pears, interestingly. So let's see exactly what went on there. So uh, we'll just come out of that and then we'll press R to get into the combat log. And we can see that the, uh, the Marks Dwarf and uh, a Ranger, both of them uh, dogpiled onto this guy in the end. So let's see, oh yeah, pages and pages of combat text. Wow, they had an absolute epic Barney. Looks like what actually killed the Weaver was that dog latching onto his head and then swinging him around right until his head came apart by the looks of it. Oh, he re regains consciousness briefly, passes out from exhaustion and bleeds to death. So now that the coffins have been dragged into place, we'll need to um, designate those for burial using the Q menu. So I'll press Q, and then um, it's B for burial, um, and it's already on allowing citizens, but not allowing pets. So we'll just go along the road there and allow all of those for burial. Hoping this many dwarves won't die, but uh, anything's possible. Okay, so our dwarves have cleared out the area for the kennel, so that's B to build. And I can't remember what kennel is. Is it K or is it capital K? It is just a K. There we go. So we'll build that right in the middle. Our dwarves with the animal training labour enabled should be along to build that any second. And I think we've got quite a few dwarves with that particular labour enabled. There we go. So now our kennels are complete. We'll need to add a couple of tasks to it in order to, um, to get those dogs trained up. We don't do it in the usual manner, using the Q menu, you can see there are only a couple there to capture a live animal or to tame a small animal, which are neither of those are what we need. We need to use the Z menu, then enter to go into animals, 
and you can see the status of all of our pets and what have you here. So we'll scroll down those and you can see when we get to a dog, a couple of options at the bottom light up. One of those is hunting training and the other one is war training. And we'll be marking that dog to be trained in war. Um, that dog there has a name. That means, that although it's a stray dog, it has a name. Now that means that it's actually killed someone else, so that must be the dog which killed the weaver. There are only two ways an animal can get a name, either by killing someone or something, or by being someone's pet. There we go, so we'll train him for war. And there's another one there for war. And this is also where you designate animals for slaughter as well, and I think I'll do that as well for a couple of them. So I'm sure I saw a, uh, yep, there's a kitten there, and we don't want any additional cats. Cats can reproduce incredibly quickly, and uh, if they select an owner, rather than an owner selecting them as a pet, then they're unkillable. You can't really kill them without their owner going into a huge tantrum, and it can cause what's called a cat explosion where your frame weight is, uh, is lowered beyond redemption by uh, just an insane number of cats. So we'll want to avoid that. So the kitten here will mark for slaughter with the B button. I know it sounds brutal, but trust me, it's the only way. And we've already got a piglet, a puppy, and a goat kid there as well. I think we'll save the llama. We'll keep the llama, certainly. I think he might be caged anyway. I'll need to let him out in a second. Now the donkey, let's see. I think we'll need to kill the donkey for its meat because they're grazers. That's a duck. Uh, water buffalo, even though it's only a calf, again, we will kill that because it's a grazer. It will graze a large amount. The same for the yak. I will keep the alpaca because you can shear alpacas and yaks um, and uh, sorry and um, and llamas and they don't eat too much so they're actually quite a good investment uh, and a cow there I will slaughter the cow there we go so we've got a few animals training up for war in the kennels and a couple of animals being slaughtered and we should see all of that take place kind of around these areas any second now So as you can see, there's a spread of miasma coming out of this uh, slaughterhouse. So that means something in there has gone rotten, something's gone wrong. Let's have a quick look. Um, well, it does seem quite a few things there. I can't see what might have gone rotten. There's a lot of yak stuff there which was uh, due to be processed. Lots of horn. That should have all gone to a stockpile. Uh, there we go, there's the rotten stuff, in fact. So we'll need to uh, dump that. See, this is what I was afraid of. We slaughtered them, but they're just going rotten here. That's why I left food, store, um, food hauling on all of my doors. That shouldn't have happened. Very unlike me, you'll notice I didn't make a diagonal entrance to that particular area. So that's my fault entirely. Um, I could have made a spread of miasma there, which would have infected the rest of the fort. However, it should be cleared up pretty quickly. Well, there you can see a spread of miasma into the fort. Some miasma there. Let's uh, let's press K. Yep, you can see miasma. I'll need to deal with that shortly. way to do so 
in a short term manner will be to uh, block off the entrance which we have and create a new one. So I'll build, construct with a capital C and then a floor and we'll just place a floor over those stairs and next of all we will select a downward staircase we'll go to designate the designate menu J for a downward staircase now let's see where's the corner here we go so that's where we'll put our downward staircase and we'll put an upward staircase just there in the corner and as well what I'll do is I'll just remove the upward stairs which we have here so that will when it's done still give us access to that particular location but will block off any miasma from getting through and you can see our dwarves are already on that so thank you very much for watching it's been a long episode but we've got a lot done if you have followed along with the tutorial then your fort should now be um, pretty much immune to starvation let's just have a quick look at the Z menu here and see exactly how many food resources we have see if I can make that a bit bigger oops that's not working there we go slightly bigger so as you can see there are created wealth it's uh, 27,000 dwarf bucks not really too much we'll uh, we haven't really started to create any crafts yet we didn't want to do that too quickly because the more wealth you create uh, the more enemies you will attract so we'll do that once we've secured the fortress and set up a military in the next episode we can see however from the uh, from the bottom part here the food stores we've got 600 food they all seem to be plants that means our meat um, <coughs> our meat unfortunately went rotten before we get into a food store I'm not sure what happened there I'll find out um, oh it's because of pots we didn't have any pots if we didn't have pots to store the alcohol we didn't have pots to store the food in there we go that's um that's the solution. You can see um, drinks, we have 300 and seeds 80. So that's absolutely plenty. That's loads of food for our dwarves, loads of drink. Um, they'll be absolutely fine for some time with that. And you can see we actually have an X dwarf and a Marx dwarf listed there as well. That's interesting. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. All the best.